Yo, what's up, everybody? It is time for the Jason Masood Show, episode five. We are live on Twitch right now, and I have a very special guest. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey, everybody. I'm Flute Dude Music on TikTok. My name is Dennis. Um, I am here to just kind of chat with Jason and have a good time right now. So tell us a little bit about what you do. Well, what I do and what I ended up doing on TikTok are two different things. So um, <laughs> I, I actually just, um, I have a lot of performance anxiety. So I got on the TikTok to kind of alleviate some of that. And one of my videos blew up. I blew up um, the TLT song, the My Ordinary Life. Oh, okay. And what, that song kind of blew up because I guess every flute player plays it. So I played it once because I was really new to TikTok, didn't know. And people were like, oh, play this song. And I was like, oh, that's cute. Let's do it. So <laughs> I played it and like a week later it blew up. And so I started getting a bunch of requests for anime stuff. And truth be told, I have never watched anime in my life. <laughs> Whoa. So I was like, um, okay. So I listened to the music and I was like, oh, well, the music is actually really good. And I, even though I've never listened to or watched any anime, I decided I was going to play some anime songs. So I did. And I was getting lots of like, lots of followers, lots of likes, lots of everything. So I was like, okay, well, I think I found my niche. So never watching anime. I'm pretty much an anime flutist now, I guess. <laughs> um, but, but I do a lot of other stuff now on TikTok. I do um, some classical stuff, some more um, flute solo kind of work. And then I do covers as well. My YouTube channel is typically covers. But that's kind of doing poorly, so. Oh, okay, okay. We don't um, talk about that one. Uh, you know what? The cool thing is, I actually have a similar story. So I was never really too big on anime until I started content creating and going live on Twitch TV and stuff. It's been about five months that I've been doing it now. But um, what blew up was my Hisika theme that I posted on TikTok. And that thing, like, absolutely just blew up. I, I was literally stuck on 48 followers for, like, maybe a month just stuck. I was not growing. I was posting two times a day, posting high quality content. Nobody cared. I post Hisika's theme. And then out of nowhere, like I literally went from 48 followers to I think like 20 K in a matter of like a month and a half. So, yeah. um, I started doing more anime stuff and then I realized, dude, okay. Anime music one is absolutely beautiful. And two, the community is so positive and so welcoming and just so engaging, you know? It really is like I've I've found nothing but support from them, um, just because you play a theme that someone loves and they just they adore you. They just give you all the accolades you can possibly want. And for someone with performance anxiety, that is huge because you go into it thinking people are going to hate you or they're going to really not like what you're putting out there. And then for people to really welcome you into the community is really awesome. Exactly. And one of my favorite things is, uh, you know, like going on TikTok live and somebody asks for, you know, Hisika's theme. As soon as I play it, the chat just starts going crazy, man. Like I literally they feel do. like I'm making their day. And it's such a cool feeling to do that for people. You know, I, I just, I love it. I love it. Yeah. It's really great. Like um, when I heard, well, someone requested Hisika's theme. I hadn't heard it ever. And I pulled it up on YouTube and I was like, Oh, that's pretty cool. I like that it's like it's hurry and you know, oh, it's got a really cool rip in it. Like that's pretty awesome. So then I played it and I played the standard like regular version that everyone plays because that's what I heard. Right. And then I was like, okay, well, I found your video. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I was like, oh well his his guitar playing is still like it continues to go. So I should probably do that. And then I saw that everyone was like duetting your video and they would stop. Oh yeah. And as, as soon as they stopped, I was like, but you're chickening out. Like let's, let's do the rest of it. So I did the rest of it and that's when we kind of connected. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's actually how I met, um, how I met Dennis. I posted that Hisika video. And as he said, you know, a lot of people were duetting it and then, um, yeah. And then he did his duet and he actually played the whole entire thing with me. And there's, there's one part, there's a few sections in the song that are just like really, really fast that nobody else was doing. Dennis did it. As soon as I saw him do that, I was like, dude, this guy is the real deal. And now, you know, we're doing duets um, and he's on the show. And I'm really, really happy to have you, man. You're very, very talented. Definitely Thank very you. talented. So, so are you. You're very talented as well. Um, Thank you just, so much. I love, I love instruments that can play chords like you can because we get to play, like sometimes I can play a couple notes if I'm doing multiphonics, but you guys get to play like actual full music by yourself and I don't get to do that because I'm a one-noter, you know, one note at a time. Right, right, right. 
But um, so I want to talk to you a little bit about your performance anxiety. So you said you have performance anxiety. Ha- have you always had that throughout your whole life, or is it something that just recently happened? Or I honestly feel like it comes with being a bigger person. Um, growing up, you you do get a lot of the backlash for being bigger, right? And I think that transfers over to other areas of your life where the things that you feel like you do well. You, you can't possibly do that well because people are just going to notice you for being a big person. So I think that's kind of where the, uh, the anxiety came in to begin with. And then I was, I focused starting a few years ago on how I can get rid of that as I go. Cause I was in college for music and I play really well, but I couldn't stand up in front of people and play without having a complete like body breakdown. Oh, wow. And no way. A, a shut down, yeah, a shut down because I wasn't, I wasn't, I would either have to be on like beta blockers to like do something to my body, or I would have to be just living in fear playing for people. It was wow. Kind of crazy. So, okay. Um, have you played music your whole life? Did you, you know, were you in the middle school band, high school band, or um, did yeah. you start later in life? It's kind of interesting because I remember playing the violin in fourth grade at a, at a school. My, my family moved around a lot in Florida. Mm-hmm. And we, I think in fourth grade, I played the violin at a school near Fort Lauderdale area, but um, I'm left-handed. So I remember that vividly because I had to have a left-handed violin. And so every time we went to go play the violin in class, I had to like have a special violin. So I think I started the violin first, but then I went to like a, one of those band instruments um, where they demonstrate all the instruments to you, all right. like a, a band night. And I completely botched the name. I, I loved the flute. I told my parents clarinet. Oh, and, no way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So, so they, they bought me a clarinet. And I can, never, I can never repay them or never thank them enough for it. Because I know that we were very um, on the, not poverty stricken, but like we were low income. Right. And for them to be able to get an instrument for me to, um, to help me do something that I really wanted, I can never repay them for that. But I started on the clarinet and it was like fifth grade. And in seventh grade, I was in the middle school band and I wanted to play, I was playing someone else's flute because I was always attracted to the flute. I really love the flute. Uh-huh. But my band director was like, he scolded me for playing someone else's flute. And I don't know, I never know why. So huh, that's um, I never, yeah. So <laughs> um, eventually I got back into it, but I, I picked up, he, it was, he didn't want me to play the, someone else's flute, but I could play a tenor sax in the jazz band. So I didn't, I don't know why he let me do that. So. It, it sounds like maybe he needed a tenor sax player and maybe he didn't need an extra flute player. So he kind of did it for his own benefit. Um, I feel like, yeah. you know, a lot of band directors kind of do that, you know, where if they need an instrument, they're like, hey, you should play this instrument instead of this instrument. This one's a lot better. Right. But in reality, they actually need that instrument in their section. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. But dude, that's a really funny story. So you thought when you said I want a clarinet, you were actually saying I want a flute. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking I was thinking of the flute when I said I wanted to play the clarinet. Oh man, okay. So you've pretty much been playing your whole life. Yeah, pretty much. Wow. Okay, so you started off um in the bands. Uh I'm I'm assuming, you know, reading music. When when you were doing mm-hmm. that as, as a younger player, were you also improvising and creating your own music or was it more, you know, just reading sheet music and learning, learning music through, I was, through that way? I was very much a play by ear person and I am so attracted to the idea of pop music because it's, it's just very poppy and beautiful to me. So I would always kind of do cover songs when I was growing up, clarinet or flute or saxophone when I was playing it or whatever. Oh, nice. I would always play like the pop songs. I'd play them on other instruments. Um, and it's very a very touchy subject with me, but one of my biggest influences is Kenny G. Oh. And when I was in middle school, I think, I think he's really the person who kept me going in music because I really didn't want to continue because of all the drama surrounding not being able to play the flute or not being able to do this. And my band director was like, no, don't listen to Kenny G. So wait, you're, wait, uh, sorry, I, I don't mean to cut you off, but your band director told you not to listen to Kenny G? Yeah. What the hell? What kind <laughs> of band director is this, bro? What the hell, man? Yeah. That, there, dude, are, that... there are a lot of people against him, but Th- there I, are. I, just, I, I, can't, I can't thank Kenny G enough either because he's really made me grow as a musician. 
So I think that's where my the fluidity of the runs and everything come from because I I was used to listening to his music a lot. But that being said, um, like I really I don't know I just kind of got into that in middle school playing a bunch of different instruments and yeah. Wow, that's really cool because um a, a lot of the people that I talk to who started off in band and reading music, um some of them got stuck only reading music and they didn't really play around with you know improvisation and learning things by ear which i think is one of the most valuable tools you can have as a musician learning totally. something by ear okay it requires you to actually sit there and listen to it internalize the melody until you can actually get it out of your instrument and that act alone builds such an important skill um totally. as a professional musician you know and i feel like that's something that um a lot of you know classical players sometimes neglect and I don't think it's their fault. I feel like there's a lot of people out there who say, if you're going to play this instrument, you have to play it this way, or you have to have music in front of you. You have to learn how to read music. Reading music is a very important tool. But for me personally, music is all about, you know, playing what you feel and trying to get your emotions out. So then the audience, you know, the listener, they, they connect and they relate. And that's why we love certain bands and certain artists, because we really connect with them. And I feel like the only way you'll really find yourself as a player is if you sit there and you learn melodies by ear and eventually start working on your own music. Yeah, totally. I think that's one of the reasons why I left the music school at college was that they wanted me to be an orchestral player. I was in the performance track um, or an education track or whatever track I was in at the time. They really wanted me to play orchestrally. Right. And that is not who I am as a flute player. I am definitely a pop flute player, um, you know, an anime flute player now, apparently. <laughs> yeah. so, <laughs> add that, add so, that title. <laughs> right, exactly. So it's just, it feels very, very boxed in when you're going to college for something like that. Because if your ideas and the things you want to do don't line up with theirs, you'll never make it through. They'll never see you as a player. So I knew that I needed to, to leave the music program and do something else if I ever wanted to progress in the way I wanted to in the music. Right. Oh, wow. Okay, so how long did you go to college for, for music? For music, I was only there for three semesters, so a year and a half. A year and a half, okay. And, and then you decided yeah. to leave? You, you left college altogether? Yeah, so I'm, I auditioned for flute, and I got in on flute. Or no, sorry, I auditioned in person on clarinet, and I got in on clarinet. And then I was like, well, I really want to do the flute. So I auditioned on flute and I got in on flute too. So I was a dual instrument major. Right. But the way they view it is very, um, I don't, I can't even describe it. They wanted you to do everything for both studios. So you have a lot of things you have to do. Oh yeah. For, like you have the clarinet studio, the flute studio, you have performances in each, you have all the stuff you have to do. So they were not backing down on the requirements, even though I was a double instrument major. Mm -hmm. So it was basically impossible to do two instruments. So they made me choose an instrument basically. And uh, I chose the flute because it was the one that I had the most experience with and most I, the one I loved the most. But uh, it, I, in the end, I really wanted to be something like a, uh, a Broadway pit orchestra. Right. Um, a musician because I play a bunch of different instruments and I, I was in pit orchestras for quite a while before um, you know, during college and stuff like that. And I really enjoy that, but they never saw that as a viable, um, uh, track, I guess, for someone, you know, and that's, that's unfortunate. I actually went to college for music as well. I went to a uh, community college for two years. Um, a, I guess you can say as a music major. And, um, I actually auditioned to be in the jazz band at one of my favorite schools, Cal state Fullerton. I went there. I completely bombed my audition so bad that when I left, I literally got in my car, started screaming the F word nonstop, drove up to the mountains and just kind of sat there and really thought about what I want to do with my life. Because I knew after that audition, I wouldn't get in. Now, the thing is, when I grew up playing guitar, um, I was self-taught. I loved rock. I loved pop. Um, I never really dabbled into jazz. And once I found out about jazz, I really did like it. But once I actually went to school for it, they cram so much information and they expect you to learn so much. I had no knowledge of music theory going in and they just start cramming all these scales, you know, music theory, all this homework. Plus you have to learn all of these songs. 
that, you know, most people don't even care about. And I didn't even really enjoy playing. And um, that was actually one of the best moments of my life, bombing that audition for the university level jazz band, because that's when I realized I love jazz, but I want to play it my way when I do play it. And I don't want somebody to tell me I have to play this song or play this or anything like that. I, I just want to play music for me. So then I eventually, I went to uh, a university for one semester, a uh, different university. And after that semester, I said, you know what? Screw this. I want to pursue doing a music, uh, being a musician on my own. And I want to build my own connections and I want to play the music that I want to play. And um, it's just unfortunate how the educational system, when it comes to music, um, they don't really talk about feeling the music or the heart and the soul that's required to play music. It's just, it's more academic and music. I mean, yeah, it could be academic, but dude, like in the end, you should be able to play what you want to play, you know, and what yeah. you feel and what, what you really connect to. Um, somebody actually redeemed guitar flute shred. So let's just go ahead and shred something right now. Doesn't even have to be in time or in the same key. Because it's going to sound like a mess anyway because of this latency, but let's just do it. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> Ready? Go. <laughs> I don't even know what key you're in. A minor. Oh, nice. <laughs> The, um, the one you did the other day that I uh, duetted, um, I was like, this person is in F sharp. And what the hell is he doing? <laughs> uh, I don't even remember what key I was in, actually. I think I was in like E flat minor or something. I don't, I don't know. I don't remember, honestly. Oh, yeah. It might, it might have been E flat minor because I was like, I was doing all the F sharp stuff. And I was like. Hey, it oh, worked, hey. though. It worked. No, it no, worked. totally. <laughs> um, can you actually, can you play something on the flute? I don't think they heard you over my guitar. I think my guitar cut you off. Like shredding it? You can you can play anything you want. I don't even know Hisoka anymore. Let me get that. Sure. Yo, everybody in the chat, give him a round of applause. That was beautiful. The mic actually cut you off uh, in a couple of spots, but yeah, but you know what? We were able to hear it and that, man, that was incredible. That was incredible. Thank you. Of course. So um, I want to talk to you about COVID and how it's affected you as a musician. That's something that I really like to talk to musicians about because, you know, it hit us really, really hard. So can you explain to us how, um, how it's affected you as a musician? Definitely. Um, well, in some ways it's very good, some ways it's actually bad. But in the beginning of COVID, when everything shut down, I was working with my producer to re-record my EP. So last year, I released a very, very, very rough version of my EP <laughs> um, where I did everything and I know nothing about producing music. So it was very terrible. But I had the goal <laughs> of ha having something tangible or something um, that people can actually um have of my music before i turned 40. so i did and it was a great accomplishment which is fantastic but um the realization afterwards was like you know what it's just not quality at all and i couldn't really afford to to make it quality at the time so but i, I had a new job at the time um in the beginning of the year and i was making great money so i was like let's get in the studio so i got in the studio with my producer friend and uh, we re-recorded everything. So all five tracks we re-recorded and then he was going to put together everything as far as the producing and mastering, all that stuff. Right. So right. Um, as soon as we were ready for that, we had just finished recording everything. And like the next day, everything shut down. Oh, so he, he wasn't able to get back in the studio to do the mixing and mastering. He couldn't do anything because everything closed here in Denver. Oh, so, wow. So, yeah. So... <laughs> Um, and then I lost my job. We were not able to work. So um, I lost the income that I was making. So I really couldn't afford to do it anyway. So um, I had, you know, fast forward a couple of months of 
doing nothing but sitting in my house making videos and figuring out what I'm gonna do, gonna right. do um, I figured out that um, I was going to start teaching. So I got a job teaching, which pays my bills. And now I, I have my side business, which is a mobile hair salon. Mm -hmm. So I go to people's place to do their hair. And that explains I, the blue mohawk. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so I do that with the emphasis on um, the COVID restrictions, making sure mm -hmm. that people understand that I am coming to them to do their hair. I'm doing it cleanly, safely, all that stuff. So I get a lot of business from that. But that's my play money. What I'm gonna what I'm gonna call my music money. So that money is going toward being able to pay for my EP stuff. So yeah, I'm definitely uh, I'm not at the point where people are donating to me on my like on my Venmo or anything like that through TikTok. But um, at least I have that kind of income on the side to help with the EP that I'm hoping hoping um, is released either. <laughs> That's kind of that, but the the upside has been, I'm an introvert at heart, so I had to stay home. And oh no, I'm staying home. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. So my question is, okay, uh, you said you guys finished everything right before COVID, so the files are still there. Yeah. Right. They're still there, but um, do you know how long it's going to take till the EP actually, you know, is actually finalized and is done? So he, I mean, obviously he had some stuff as well that he had to go through because of COVID. So um, he also moved, I think, might have been three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So in his new place, um, he is actually setting up a studio in his new um, new home. So hopefully with that being set up and getting, he has to get some equipment and stuff like that, which I was like, I will prepay for my EP if I get you the equipment. Oh, but wow. um, the thing is like, he has a day job too, because we're, we're both, you know, I want to make a living off my music, but I'm not there. Right. He wants to make a living off producing, but he's not there. So he has a day, a day job and the day job is real crazy right now. So it, it's taking away a little bit of the time to set up the studio at home that he really wants. So I completely understand. I am not that kind of the person who says, you know what? I want it done by this date. I'm going to find somebody else who can do it. I am, I'm kind of really loyal to people that once I find them. So you know, we all have hiccups in life and we all, you know, have to deal with stuff. So right. I make sure that, that I give people that grace that they allow me to have as well. So, Oh man. Okay. Um, well, I, I'm really looking forward to that EP. I am really, really excited to hear it. I really yes. hope that I, I really hope that the COVID thing really just goes away soon, man, because yeah. it doesn't look like it is. And it's almost been a year now and it's just madness, man. Yeah. Totally. But um, so one of my viewers asked, what anime songs have you played on flute? Can you maybe name like five <laughs> to 10? What, okay, actually, what are your favorite, your favorite anime one songs one. that you've played on flute so far? That's top five, easiest, top 10. Easiest. Okay, so the first question though, which ones I've played, you're gonna have to go to my TikTok and you're gonna have to watch them because I deserve the likes and the watches and the views and the comments. So make sure you do that. Yes, he second does. Off, <laughs> uh, second off, the my favorite is a two-parter is Isabella's Lullaby from The Promised Neverland. Um, someone requested that I, and I played the first part of it. I was like, damn, this is gorgeous. So then I was like, I got to do a second part to finish the song. So I did that. So it was two videos of the same song. So I played the entire thing. That is my um, the favorite one. And then the second one, Hisuka's Theme. It was just, it's like a shred yes. on the flute. And I just love it. It was it's so, so awesome. fun to play, bro. It's so fun <laughs> yeah, to play. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Definitely love that one. Um, let's see. Got to think of the ones that jump out to me. It's a lot of it is Hunter and Jojo. Like oh, Jojo and Hunter. Jojo's theme yeah. is so awesome. The uh, One of my favorites is definitely... Uh, I'm sure you know that one, right? I don't know that one. I might not have even covered that one. Oh, that you, okay. You know what? I just gave you a viral video. You got to learn that melody. That melody <laughs> is like, 
Man, the JoJo fans out there really love it. And honestly, it's one of my favorite melodies of all time. Uh, as soon as I heard it, I'm a big fan of harmonic minor. I love the minor sound, yeah, especially harmonic minor. And that melody is just great. I definitely, definitely recommend that you post a video of you playing that later today. And I promise you that video will do very well. I hope so. Um, I'll have to do it. Uh, Leorio's theme. That is a, one of my favorites um, because it has alto flute in it. And I love playing alto flute. Oh, nice. So Yeah. So what's that? Three? Isabel's Lullaby, Hisoka's theme, Leorio. Anything Hunter x Hunter. That's kind of, I don't know. I can't really make a judgment call on a, a certain one of Hunter x Hunter, but um and let's see number five man on the spot here i know it's kind of, it's hard to think about things on the spot listen i've done like 300 videos <laughs> i don't even know what I've done. <laughs> <laughs> um man can i just say zelda themes <laughs> sure hey that works um you actually did a couple duets with me on um some I of the did, zelda yeah. themes yeah uh I zelda mean, uh so did you grow up playing legend of zelda did you play yeah, video games there. Oh, you did. Yep. Okay, so you're you were a Let's video see. game fan, but not an anime I, fan. I am a Zelda and Mario fan. That's it. <laughs> That's oh, the really? Video games <laughs> I ever played. Yeah. So Zelda and Mario, and I think a lot of it was because the music was amazing. Oh, yeah. But it it never felt. Um, I don't know. I never felt like like a. I don't like first person shooters or anything like that because it's just not my style. Right. But I really felt I liked the um the storylines that the Zelda games were giving, especially because they were like alternate timelines and stuff like that. So I was very big into Zelda, very big into Mario. Those are my video games. Oh, okay. So out of all the Legend of Zelda games that you've played, which one's your favorite? I, I really want to say Breath of the Wild, but Skyward Sword is, wow. I feel, really, really underrated. I've never heard, bro, everybody usually bashes Skyward Sword. That's so cool that, that you said that uh, that's one of your favorites. I was I expecting like you to say, you know, the cliche answer, Ocarina of Time. I don't blame anybody for saying that. It's a beautiful game. Yeah, that's um, totally my husband's favorite. He loves Ocarina of Time. But I am, like the Skyward Sword stuff, like the storyline was awesome. The music was amazing. And I just really enjoyed playing that game. Oh, okay. And Breath of the Wild. Oh, man. So some people bashed it in the beginning. I thought it was beautiful. The open world, oh, the graphics, you know, jumping off of mountains and gliding. Dude, I could just do that all day, man. That game was really, really good. I was a I big really fan. enjoyed that game. Yeah. I'm actually not really thrilled about the um, the Age of the Calamity that's that came, came out recently. Mm -hmm. Not my favorite, but um, I'm just, it's it seems very first person shooter first person attacker because that's what you are doing basically so it's not really my thing but um so i see someone says dragon roost island theme and wind waker is a really great game i really do love oh yes wind waker. yeah wind waker is definitely one of my favorites um that uh just the story and the animation like the graphics dude those those games just really hit you straight in the heart that's what i love about yeah. them you know the storylines are so deep and you really connect with the characters and the storyline Oh man, yeah. it's so it's so awesome. Um, so I want to go back to the uh, the performance anxiety. So TikTok has helped you through that now, right? Do you feel like I, TikTok yeah. is um is helping you out? Yeah, definitely. I think a lot of it, like, there's not too many in, uh, comments in the negative way. And usually, if they're really negative, I'm just like, okay, well, you're just kind of a jerk. But right. Um, for the most part, like everyone is super supportive of the music and what I'm doing on there. So I, I, it has allowed me to open up and to be a little bit more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Vulnerable, vulnerable. Right. And that's, that's one of the hardest things about, you know, being a musician or being an artist in general, you know, we're, we're putting our hearts on the line every time we post a video, you know, it's, it's well, I think I think a lot of it is that people don't understand how much we're doing for each video that we do to put it on there and then to have someone come and bash you for it. It's like, but listen, I had to learn the music. I had to record the music. I had to you know, play with the audio to make sure it was sounding good for TikTok. I had to record video. I had to link it up. I had to do this and that. Like they don't understand everything that goes into it um, when you're trying to put quality stuff out on TikTok and not just hitting record and posting it. Yeah, and that's a good point too. Um, people don't realize how much time really goes into it unless they're actually doing it. 
you know, and um, now that I've gotten into YouTube and doing, um, you know, like more videography stuff and video editing and stuff like that. Now I realize there's a whole nother world to this. And, you know, when somebody is doing the music and also making videos, that is just such a big, big time commitment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for us, we're, we're musicians out there on the grind. We're trying to make this happen. Like you said, I'm on the same uh, path as you where I want to make music my only source of income, my main source of income. I want to make music my life. The problem is when you're starting from the very beginning and you're trying to build a following, you're trying to build a fan base, it's really, really tough, man. And one thing that really hurts is, I don't know if this has happened to you, when you spend a lot of time on a video, you spend a lot of time learning the music for a difficult piece. You put it all together. You watch it. You're like, oh, I can't wait to show this to people. You post it and nobody gives a shit. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's so yeah. true. It's so true. Everything oh, in man. our head is always like we have these ideas. Like I posted something about um, perfect pitch. And I was like, oh, we're going to test to see if I have perfect pitch. It was a complete joke video mm -hmm. because I played a note and I would say – a different note, a different note name. Right. So I play like E flat and I would say G. And to me, this is hysterical because obviously I would know what note I'm playing on the flute. Yeah. But I'm saying a different note. So it was just funny to me. And then I, the last one, I, I played an A and I said A and I was like, oh, maybe I do have perfect pitch. But the whole, <laughs> I, the whole idea behind it was that, well, no, you'd get everything right if you had perfect pitch. Right. Um, and and then the fact that I was playing the notes, so I, I shouldn't know. Like, it was hysterical in my head. But, it, I mean, maybe it has a couple thousand views on it now. But uh -huh. um, pre-exiting the creator fund, it probably would have had, like, ten hits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So um, did people bash you for that video? Were they like, oh, dude, what the hell? You don't know the notes you're playing? Did oh, any of no, that no, no. happen? No, I think people just didn't get the joke. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So when when they um, and I even had like a, the crying emoji, the laughing crying emoji up there. It was I thought it was hysterical, but and then, someone, <laughs> one, oh, man. one of the comments was like, "But aren't you playing the notes? Wouldn't you know the fingerings?" And I was like, "That's the joke." <laughs> yeah, that's such <laughs> like a facepalm moment, dude. Where it's like, "Oh, dang." Uh, so so you were part of the TikTok Creator Fund. How long were you uh, on the Creator Fund for? I can remember the exact day, my first day back teaching, um, October 12th, I joined the, the creator fund. It was my first day back teaching. And while I was in class, something blew up and I reached over 10,000 followers that, that day. Oh, nice. And, and so I, I was like, oh yeah, totally going to join the, the creator fund. So October 12th till when was, what was yesterday? The 20th or two days ago, the 19th. So just over a month. Oh, okay. Okay. And, uh, did it help you at all? Not a single bit. Really? Not a single bit. It was, um, interesting because like before I joined, I was getting good, like really good views. My videos were finally being seen by people. Right. Um, after I had that one blow up, the, the first one with the, my, um, uh, my TLT, my mm -hmm. ordinary life, by TLT. Um, I had like 2,500 followers after that one. I was like, oh, yes, yeah, living large. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. Then, and then all of a sudden I was like getting four or 500 a day followers. And then while I was in class, I had 1,300 followers in like a four hour period, period of time. And it was kind of crazy. And that's what put me over the 10,000. But after that, I, my, once I joined the thing, my views went down. Or, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say down. I feel like my content was the same i don't feel like my content was worse mm -hmm. at all but i was doing the requests i was doing the stuff that everyone was asking for but it wasn't getting the views that i felt like definitely got before the creator fund oh wow okay so when i uh someone commented the other day and they were like are you part of the creator fund and i'm like yeah I'm not sure that i was doing much and he's like you're probably getting shadow banned and i was like but I've been looking up like the hashtags that I use and literally they're all popping up with my videos because I have like my flutorial hashtag because I right. kind of created the hashtag and it definitely lists me. It has like 2.7 million views. So it, I'm not getting shadow banned, but there is definitely some suppression going on. I think mm -hmm. where my videos were not being pushed out as much as they were before the, the creator fund. Wow. Okay. So do you have any advice on how to be successful on TikTok, I guess, or how to get um, 
consistent views. Because the, the problem that I'm having is I'll have a video, like sometimes I'll post a video and I'm like, ah, this video is not going to do good. And then that one gets like, you know, 5,000 to 10,000 views. And then I post one right. where I really try and I think that it's going to do well. And then I get like, you know, sometimes only 400 views in total after a few days. And it, I have 20,000 followers. And it, for me, it's like really confusing because I don't know what I'm doing wrong. You know, do you have any, uh, have you learned anything along the way that has helped you be more consistent, I guess? I think a lot of it has to do with knowing the audience. And since my audience was more of the, they just want to hear the anime themes, mm -hmm. it almost didn't matter. Um, obviously the playing quality mattered. They want to hear it correct, but it didn't matter if there was like huge video efforts put into it. Just me chilling in my 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 uh, office playing a an anime theme, and as long as it was like one that everyone was requesting, it usually did well. But I see that now that I left the creator fund, everything is doing well. Oh wow! So okay. I, everything that I posted since leaving the creator fund has been doing well. So I feel like that stuff's going right out to the the FYP, and uh, I feel like people are seeing my stuff again. I've actually getting into a new um area of TikTok, people are following me that used to play the flute um or used to be in band because i i posted um sleigh ride yesterday uh -huh. and i posted like um a video of me playing like the flute one part to the sleigh ride audio that alexa was playing for me right oh, my alexa, my alexa is gonna that go was off. sleigh ride on a leroy uh oh anderson. <laughs> anderson. she's gonna go off here don't play anything, please. Okay. So, <laughs> so me me playing along to that, and then I um, duetted myself with the flute two part, and people went crazy. There's like, it's probably somewhere near ninety thousand views on it now. Whoa! Um, no way! Congratulations! Yeah, it's really crazy, but it brought in a whole new viewership for me because I was tagging things like virtual band or concert band and stuff like that, that I have never tagged before. Right. Um, and then, so my anime people are commenting on my concert band stuff and my, the concert band people are seeing my anime stuff. So now I'm kind of like within a couple different families. So I think that's helping me out a lot right now. Oh, wow. Okay. That's really cool. Yeah. So your community is growing different interests, but they're actually coming yeah. together. Yeah. Oh, Whereas wow. before, I, before I would post like a like a flute solo, like the due to you sonatine or something like that, and it, people would be like, "Oh, that's really pretty. That's really great. It, you know, you're really great at playing the flute." But it was never bringing bringing in that viewership of another kind of um, section of TikTok. Right. But this one did, and I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that it's a holiday song. People remember playing it from band, all sorts of stuff like that, and they are coming in in droves now. Oh wow, that's really cool. So um, when you when you make a post and you think about the hashtags, do you feel like it's important to keep those hashtags kind of, um, I guess, similar in a way, at least in theme, you know, like if you, what, what are some hashtags that you use? So my hashtags that I use, um, typically are hashtag flute, obviously, if I'm, if I'm playing the flute, um, I'll do like hashtag flute, TikTok. Um, and usually I'll go in the same order. It's music, hashtag flute music. Um, I always try to hashtag the name of the piece, mm -hmm. hashtag the, um, composer or the artist or whatever. Um, uh, like I hashtagged Leroy Anderson because that's the person who wrote the version of Slay Ride right. that I was playing. Um, and then, then back before when I was doing the coconut mall from we, uh, that one kind of blew up too, but then they were like, you need to do coconut mall ye. Y E E, and I was like, "What the hell is a is a Yi?" <laughs> yeah. So, so I went through and I did the the video, the Coconut Mall Yi, and that blew up. But then, um, I created the Sleigh Ride Yi to do that. So I hashtag that so that people can find it. Like I just do that. Um, I always hashtag F Y P. Okay. You um, know, I've heard mixed things about uh, hashtag F Y P and how it doesn't yeah. really work, and you're not supposed to. You know, that's just a waste of a hashtag. And I've also heard things like only use four to five hashtags. Is that something that you do or I, do? No, I fill up my 150 characters. <laughs> oh, you okay. That's what I, I used to do. That's what I used to do in the beginning. And since I've had my blow up, I've only limited my hashtags to like four or five. So I think I'm, today, once we get off this podcast, I'm going to try a couple posts where 
I don't care, and I just fill up the whole 150 characters because maybe in the end that was all BS. Yeah. You're, you're saying, I mean, it's working for I, you. I honestly feel like it. Like what happens is some people are searching for those hashtags, and if I can put everything that's pertinent in my hash in my um description, it's more of a possibility they're going to find me because of a hashtag. Right. So that's why that's why I do that. Um, I would caution on maybe posting two things like really soon. We'll see what happens with mine because I suppose I posted um, Slay Rai Yi. I posted like six different parts added on, duetted like five different times. Mm -hmm. And we'll see what that does. But um, usually I feel like I do better when I post something, wait five, six hours and post something else uh -huh. uh, instead of posting really soon after because I feel like it needs one needs time to breathe before I put something else in there. Oh, okay, okay. And how many posts a day do you usually make? I try to do three. At I least three. Do, okay. Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. Okay. So enough about TikTok. Um, I guess my question to you is what is your long-term goal with music? What is your, what is your ideal? I would love to be on stage playing in front of people. Oh, okay. Whether so it, whether it's like a, a live, like at a jazz bar or a stadium, I don't care. I just want to be in front of people playing. Oh, have you ever thought about uh, putting together your own band? I have actually, and no one wants to. Oh, <laughs> so, wait, what do you mean? What do you mean? I, I can't find people to do it. I would love to play in like a Latin band. I think it would be pretty awesome to be oh, like, nice. the, like the the solo artist of a Latin band, being right. like a Latin flute player. Um, that would be cool. I think um, some sort of a smooth jazz kind of ensemble would be pretty awesome. Um, and, you know. I play the saxophone, I play the clarinet, and I would like to do something that incorporates all of it. But at the end of the day, I wanted to pay my bills. Right, right. Of course. But um, so you're having trouble finding musicians. Were, yeah. were, you having, were you having trouble finding musicians before COVID or is it because of COVID? Yeah, to totally. I think um, people really want to and they'll say they want to, but then trying to actually do it is another thing. <laughs> yeah. I've. Um, oh, man, I have so much so many bad memories of people meeting up with people coming coming up with all these ideas and all these plans and how oh we're going to start playing shows we're going to start writing music and yeah. after like one week they stop being consistent they stop showing up they lose interest and it's like why did you yeah. tell me you were down to do this and you were willing to go all the way and then you just bail on me i don't get exactly. it exactly yeah um it's very hard to find like-minded people especially musicians who are willing to put in the time that you are you know yeah. Which is, I think, really cool. This is part of the reason why um, I started doing my own thing. I've pretty much grown up uh, my whole life and most of my uh, adult life, you know, being in bands and usually waiting for opportunities, you know, like waiting for somebody to get me a gig or somebody to call me for a gig. But since COVID, what COVID has taught me is I could do stuff on my own too. You know, I started Twitch streaming. I started making YouTube content, started going on TikTok. And now I don't have to rely on anybody. I don't have to wait on anybody. I could do it all on my own. And, yeah. you know, if I stop posting, the only person I can blame is myself. And I really like having that. I really like having that accountabil accountability where if something doesn't get done, it is only my fault, you know? Um, exactly. I think I think it's good, and I think it's a really good challenge. Yeah. And, and it's, really it seems like you're doing the same thing. Yeah, I don't like to rely on anybody because they always let me down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely, so, definitely. So I I try to make sure that I don't put myself in a position where I have to rely on somebody else to do something for me. There's always that backup, well, if I if they can't do it, I'm going to learn to do it or, you know, I'm going to do what I what I have to do. Um like even if I like there was a a point where I was um I had an allergy attack because the weather changed. Right. And I was I was not in a position to play the flute because my sinuses were just kind of effed. But uh, so I had backup videos and I was like, I have to post no matter what. Like I am posting my three videos a day. It doesn't matter if I'm sick or not. Right. And I, I still did it because that's just who I am as a person. And I know that there are people, if I were relying on someone to post for me, if they were sick, I'm not sure that they would have still been able to post for me, you know? Yeah. No, that's a very good point. Um, real quick, I just want to agree with the chat. I totally dig his mohawk and the color of it too. <laughs> Thanks. It's actually called a... <laughs> called a faux hawk oh yeah so, faux hawk yeah it's faux hawk gotta get that uh, that terminology in there for being oh yeah 
Exactly. Oh man, so um, it's really cool that TikTok was able to bring us together, man. Um, yeah, it's really cool. Sorry, I definitely dude. think that me and you should uh should collab on a track in the future. You know, do you definitely. have do you have the resources to re to record your own stuff? Um, do you use a yeah. DAW? Do I use what? Uh, a DAW. Do you use like you know Logic, Ableton, oh, Reaper? I use Logic. Oh yeah. Okay. So do I. So do I. And um, when you're miking up your instruments, what do you usually use? What kind of mic? I have a Shure M81. Oh, okay, okay. And how is that? How how is it miking up your instruments? Oh, it's fine. It's I mean, I just play. It's this mic right here that I'm talking into, actually. Mm. <laughs> but um, I uh, I just play into that. Um, it's really my room is pretty quiet. I've got a lot of stuff in here to kind of deaden the sound. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, for the most part, it's pretty good. Oh, okay, nice. Now, um, I want to go back to talking about your EP. What kind of EP is it? Is there like a it's, genre that kind of, you know, gives the overall feel of the EP or is it a lot of different things? Yeah. So I'm obviously I'm a fan of pop music. So I'm trying to like branch out into a flute pop kind of a genre where it sounds like pop music, but there's no vocals. It's the flute that's doing the, the vocals part of it. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, so that's uh, how many songs are on the EP? Five. Oh, there's going to be five songs. Okay. Oh, that's super dope. All right, so real, I want to play a game with you. It's a game that I call mm -hmm. I Mustache You a Question. A total <laughs> of 20 questions. I'm going to ask you them. I want you to try to answer as fast as you can. But if you need some time to think about it, it's okay. I know it's kind of hard to answer when you're put on the spot. But are you ready? Sure. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, question number one. Who is your favorite woodwind player? You kind of answered that earlier, but Kenny go ahead. G. Kenny G. Favorite band? Um, I don't know if I have a favorite band. Can you name any? Maybe like one, two, three, top three. Um, let's see. I don't know what classifies as a band though. Artist. How about that? Uh, well, I, I love, um, as far as artists go, I'm a huge fan of like the nineties era. So, uh, Lisa Loeb was a very big um, kind of influence of mine. So Lisa Loeb and Nine Stories, I guess. Uh -huh. um, and then um, anybody R&B. I'm a huge R&B fan. So like Babyface, Tony Braxton. Those are my favorite. Um, uh, what about sound. like Usher and... Um, Usher's oh, great. Nice. Oh, yeah. Early, uh, early Usher. Oh, wow. So, dude, we should totally, totally, totally catch some like 90s R&B duets, man, because I yeah. love playing that stuff, man. I yes. I play that stuff a lot with like a lot of the cover bands that I used to play with. So, um, man, I don't know you were into R&B, though. We definitely got to catch some some sick duets pretty soon. Definitely. Oh, it's going to be dope. OK. Um, favorite place to eat? Fogo de Chão. What, what was that? Fogo de Chão. What is that? I've never heard of it. Brazilian, Brazilian steakhouse. Oh, damn. That sounds yeah. good. You know, I've, I've always wanted to try uh, Brazilian barbecue, but I haven't actually had the chance. Yeah. It's, that's our favorite restaurant. We go once a week. I shouldn't say that, but we do. All right. <laughs> nice. Favorite color. Blue. All right. Favorite modern band or mo modern artist in the past, um, let's say 10 years. Do I even know any? I'm, I'm stuck in the past, man. All right. Um, <laughs> do you listen to any newer music? I was sometimes in the car, but I've always got something on that I'm trying to like, um, to learn or trans yeah, transcribe or something like that. Um, I don't know. I'm like, I really love Alanis Morissette's new stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I don't know if I'd call her modern, but she has a new album out. So maybe she's still modern. Okay. Hey, that counts. That counts. <laughs> <laughs> Here, here's a question that I love asking. Would you rather win $1 million or play a show with your favorite artist? Oh man, <laughs> it's a tough one. I know. I feel like if I had the money, I'd be able to buy the show with the artist. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I would give anything to play a show with Kenny G. That would be pretty amazing. Yeah. Oh, that'd be crazy. Um, if you were stranded on an island, what three items would you take? Uh, my flute, my clarinet, and my sax. <laughs> hey, I like that answer, bro. <laughs> Nothing but music. Fuck music. food. We don't need food. <laughs> All no. I need are my instruments. <laughs> All right. Um, are you a Pokemon fan? I have never done anything with Pokemon. I've barely played the theme song on TikTok. Oh, right. <laughs> okay. I'm going <laughs> to skip that question. What's your favorite TV show? 
Oh, let's see. Man. I've watched so much different stuff. Like, I'd probably have to say, like, currently it's The Circle. I've never heard of that one. It's, um, like, people are in different um, apartments in a building, but they can only communicate through their TV, which is The Circle. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, like, a social media thing. And then they vote oh. people off, and they other people come in and stuff like that. So currently we're watching The Circle France, so. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. That sounds interesting. Uh, what about your favorite movie? Uh, Mannequin. I don't think I've uh, seen that one. It is. It's from the '80s, and um, oh, there we go. Favorite band, Starship. Starship oh, okay, is okay. Definitely, Starship is one of them, but um, that's the song. Nothing's gonna stop us now. Is is in Mannequin, and I just love the movie because of it. Oh, okay. What do you prefer, summer or winter? Winter. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Hands down. <laughs> me too. Um, okay, who's a better artist, Cardi B or Nicki Minaj? <laughs> oh my god, so I don't listen to either of them. But I do love Nicki's raps. Yeah, me too. I agree. Um, okay, if you were a rapper, what would your rapper name be? <laughs> <laughs> I love asking this question. What would your rapper name be? <laughs> <I don't even laughs> know. That's so that's so far removed from anything that I am. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> Flute, like, I don't know. DJ Flute? Is DJ significant of a rapper? Uh, Maybe not. What about Lil Flute? Lil Flutist. Oh, yeah, no, that'd be big, pretty good. Big, big Flutist. Big Flutist? All right, all yeah, right. Hey, flutist. I better see some rap videos on TikTok, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, favorite video games? We already talked Le about uh, that. Zel yeah, Zelda and Mario. Um, do you have any embarrassing moments that you would like to share that you've had as a musician? Maybe like an audition or maybe a performance or anything along those lines. Um, anything you can think of that you would like to share? I mean, I totally like spaced out. So when I was in college, I had to play in this thing called, um, I don't even know what it was called, but on like a Wednesday, we'd get together once a month or something and people would perform. Um, I was playing this piece <laughs> that totally sounded like baby making music mm -hmm. <laughs> and and i definitely was zoning out i was like what is going on right now because i'm like playing this baby making music to a bunch of people younger people because i started college when i was 26 so mm -hmm. they were definitely like eight years younger than me in front of, i was like this is really awkward <laughs> so but it was oh, one man. of the pieces that, that we were supposed to play so oh okay okay um, let's see. Okay. Do you have a milestone that you always look back at in your musical career? You know, a moment where it happened and after it happened, you were like, that really changed me. Um, I definitely want to say moving away from the college of music. It allowed me to kind of focus on what I wanted in music instead of what they wanted me to do. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, do you have any pet peeves when working with other musicians? I have a lot of pet peeves not working with musicians, but uh, <laughs> no, I'm I'm super I'm super chill when I'm working with other musicians. Like, as long as we get the job done, we get it done. Right. Have you ever been in a situation where um, you show up to a rehearsal and you have somebody who is who literally cannot play the song at all, and you could totally tell they have not practiced, and then you look over and they're literally <laughs> listening to the song, trying to learn it on the spot after you've spent a lot of time working on the song. <laughs> no. I oh really? Not. Oh no, no way! It's, it's funny. So I'm part of a concert band here in Denver, and I'm the I'm the flute and oboe section leader. And the music we play is not really challenging, so I don't practice it too much. Um, but I do understand that there are people in the band who either practice it a lot and get it, or don't practice it and don't get it, or whatever they're doing. But right. I don't I don't ever judge people for that because it's a community band. And there's, we all have stuff going on in our lives. So I just try to make sure that I give everyone grace and make sure that, you know, I'm not judging them too much. I can be a judgy person. I really can. But uh, there are times when I recognize that I need to rein it in a little bit. Are you judging me right now? Nope. 
I'm actually, <laughs> just kidding. I'm actually <laughs> loving your hair right now. Oh, thank you. Oh, and that's coming from a hairstylist. That is awesome. Yeah. That's a great. That's I, a great compliment. It's, it's really great. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Um, what is your favorite instrument to listen to? Uh, definitely guitar. Oh, all right. All right. So you compliment my hair and then you compliment the instrument that I play. All right. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, okay. Favorite holiday. Um, my birthday. <laughs> wow. You are selfish, aren't you? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, it's not. I, <laughs> I'm totally kidding. With that, but I don't, I don't really get into holidays because most of them are really religiously centered. Right. I'm not super religious. So um, I like Christmas time because of what it is. And I like snow and I like um, the idea that we should be grateful for what we have and, you know, um, giving people things that, you know, they need or want or whatever. But mm -hmm. I don't really feel like it should be re religiously centered for that. I think it should be a whole year thing. Right. So, oh, yeah, I okay. totally, totally agree. That's uh, some yeah. that's a really good perspective. Um, OK, last question on a scale of one to ten. How dope is my mustache? Uh, probably a 14. Oh, all uh, right. I wasn't expecting that. Thank you. <laughs> the handlebars, man. Have you ever, have you ever grown out your mustache? Like no. to the point where you can curl it? No, it drives me crazy. Why? So I have to cut it I, because I don't like it. Like when it's really long and I'm not going to spend time styling it and putting wax in it. <laughs> it takes a special person. <laughs> no, no I'm does. just kidding. <laughs> no, but, but man, honestly, like sometimes my mustache gets so long that while I'm eating, I'll actually bite on one of my mustache hairs and totally just rip it off. And it's like the super painful thing. It Sometimes yeah. it gets really, really annoying, but. That's um, why I trim it because I can't do that. Man, it's kind of funny actually, because I've always wanted a handlebar mustache, but, um, and I started growing my mustache for the first time when I was like 19. But I got really, really insecure about it, and I just shaved it off, and I kept doing that for a couple of years until I actually had the balls to grow it out. And now I feel like if I were to ever shave it, um, I would totally just lose who lose I your, am. Lose your identity. I would, I would lose myself. Yeah, it's like who who the hell am I without these with the, with this curly mustache? You know? Yeah, I but that. um. Anyway, do you have any uh? anything coming out like soon do you have any like good youtube videos that you're going to be releasing or any really cool tiktok ideas that you're going to be releasing anything you'd like to share well, with the viewers i mean i just recorded reasons i drink the cover for that for from alanis morissette's album um, i did a little bit of it on tiktok um so i recorded the entire thing i just got to record my video and set it up for youtube i haven't really focused too much on youtube lately my tiktok just kind of like overtakes my phone and I spend a lot of time kind of curating that because I want to make sure that that's good because I think that's where most of my viewership is going to come from in the future. Right. So, it, isn't it um, crazy? Um, like for me, I've been on I've been on Instagram for a long time, and uh, probably like three four years. And the amount of follows and the amount of feedback and you know just positive vibes that I've gotten from TikTok is so insane compared to Instagram. Man, TikTok yeah. is honestly like the best social media platform for getting yourself out there and finding new viewers who are actually looking for content. It's pretty crazy because there's nothing else out there like it right now, man, that the right. for you page is so insane. And I, I don't know about you, but before I made my TikTok, when people talked about TikTok, I was like, oh, it's a bunch of stupid young kids doing dances. And I was like, I'll never make a TikTok. I will never make a TikTok. And then my girlfriend, she actually showed me uh, some some guitar players on TikTok that were doing like, you know, guitar tutorials, guitar performances. And I was like, dude, I never knew that there was this side of TikTok, you know? Yeah. Um, and I just realized it, now it's such an important tool. It was so funny because I, I am that person who, if something is like real popular, really big, I am against it. 100% against it because it blew up too fast. And I was like, there's no way. Nope, it's going to be a fad. It's going to be gone. Right. But then like I made a TikTok account um, and then was watching stuff. Okay. And I, I didn't post anything for a, a second, but I was watching people's things and I was seeing some videos that were hysterical. And I was like, I have to be part of this because I, I know that I'm not funny, but I have something that I can put on there. Right. So I was looking at flute players and the, I found a flute player. His name is John. He's super famous on TikTok now. But he's not a flute player on TikTok anymore. He's more social justice. Oh, okay. And so I was watching him and like he was tonguing stuff with a metronome and he would get faster. And the last one he like started to to like play the flute 
and the entire screen like blew up. It was a huge like fire explosion. And I was laughing for so long in my bed watching that video. I was like, <laughs> I, I, ha I have to do something. This is hilarious. So that was what got me onto TikTok was that video. <laughs> oh, wow. That's cool. So outside of music, do you have any other hobbies or any other interests that, uh, that you like to do? I love to cook. Um, I love to, uh, what else do I love to do? I like to do hair, but it is a job, but that, um, I how did like you get to, into doing hair? Um, I didn't want to wait tables anymore. So I went to hair school. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, okay. So literally what happened. I, I did it when I was 20. So almost 20 years ago. I also like to bedazzle instruments. Oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> So Dang, this is the one that's... I got known I, I got known for this on TikTok because it's covered in Swarovski crystals. Oh wow, really? So I, I did it myself, but everyone was like going crazy when I first got on TikTok because that's the one I would I would play because I knew it would get me noticed. Mm -hmm. And then but now I don't use it anymore because people have noticed me and it's not my best flute. So I want to make sure I'm putting my best music out there now. So Oh, okay, okay. Do you want to play us something? Do you have anything uh you want to play for us? Well, we mentioned the Wind Waker, so I can play that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, if you can, maybe step away from the mic. Maybe yeah. take like a few. Yeah, uh, just because the mic was cutting you off earlier. Uh, I'm not yeah. sure why. It's probably too loud. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I I literally only heard like four or five notes. Damn it! I don't know oh, why no. I don't know why it's cutting you out. That is so weird. It, but it's probably the frequencies. Let me see. Does it work better on the low notes? Uh, play. Yeah, it it is the frequency. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, that's crazy. So, um, are you into improvising? Do you like improvising? Um, I like controlled improvising. <laughs> so, uh, by, by that, do you mean you like to write something and then I know, play I like, it? I like to know what's going on before I improvise it. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. So do like, you... go ahead. So like the one you did when you were playing the chords and you said musicians duet this, mm -hmm. I sat on my couch listening to it and then I did some stuff until like something clicks. So I'm not like a really good improvise and first time it's going to work. Oh, um, I see. I have to get like, and of course, being performance anxiety ridden, I don't want to put out things where it's, um, it could make me look like I don't know what I'm doing, you know? Right, right, so, right. <laughs> <laughs> so I like to make sure I can go through it. And like when I was playing the stuff on the couch, I would, I would just be like, I would figure out what the key is, uh -huh. what the chord progression was for you. And then I would figure out, I'd, be, I'd play stuff and like, usually I sing some sort of melody to myself and then I will try to emulate that in the flute okay. so that I can figure out like what I'm really wanting to improvise, I guess. I'm not sure if that's considered improv improvisation at that point, but. Uh, no, but that, that is a good point. You know, actually singing out a melody and then trying to recreate that on the instrument, I feel like will get you just, it, it'll create such a beautiful lyrical melody because you're actually singing it with your voice, you know? And I feel like, um, some musicians, uh, this happens to me a lot. Sometimes I feel like I play really fast for no reason. And it's really hard for me to slow down sometimes when I am improvising and yeah. just, you know, just really take a step back and just think about a melody more, you know, creating a motif instead mm -hmm. of usually what happens to me is I'll create a melody and then I'll, I'll start shredding a little bit and then I'll just get carried away and my fingers just start going. But it's really hard to just kind of like take a step back and relax. And I feel like actually singing what you're playing or singing it beforehand, you know, for you because you're a yeah. woodwind player. I feel like that's probably one of the best ways to create, uh, you know, a memorable, iconic melody. Yeah. I think that there's an advantage of being a, a guitar player is that you obviously know what chord you're going to play next. Mm -hmm. and so you know, like the progression that you're going to do. But for me, 
coming from this this end of it, it's really hard to know what the progression is going to be because you could be in like F sharp minor and then go to some crazy key, but you know what you're going to do, but I have no idea. Right. Yeah, <laughs> no yeah, <idea>. yeah, <laughs> definitely. So now um, after, I mean, you've been a musician for a long time. Do you feel yeah. like you can really hear chord progressions now um, or like anticipate them a little better? Um, um, or I do you say- like to, do you ever like go on a piano and figure out the chord progression that way or Not maybe? At all. Oh, really? I honestly, I honestly have almost no interest in it. I don't know what it is, but I like to play the melody stuff. Obviously, as a flute player, we play melody a lot. Yeah. But um, I don't ever think about the chord progressions. I oh, really? Know. But I think a lot of that comes from the fact that I stem from the pop world. Uh huh. And you don't really have to know the chord progressions because almost everything is one, four, five, and almost all those notes fit in with each other. Right, 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 yeah. So um, there's nothing you're not borrowing from other keys or anything like that. So it doesn't get really hairy as far as uh-huh. improvisation goes. So I feel like that is a, a little safe space for me. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I've always wondered that. Uh, because like you said, you know, me playing guitar, you know, I could play melodically or I could also play chordal. I could play harmony. And, um, you know, as a flute player, clarinet player, it's, it's a lot different because you're more of a melodic instrument but i think um that's really really cool are are there any like what's your favorite technique on the flute is there like special techniques or ways that you really like to phrase things or like go to go to techniques um well so i try to emulate voice as much as possible so a lot of times i will use um some fingerings to kind of like slide the note down and up oh okay okay mini glissando because a lot of times when you're when you're covering pop music especially, the vocalists kind of slide up to a note or they drop a note after it's been sung. So I try to make sure that is a thing that's going on. But if you just do the note down, it just it's a jump. It's not like a, a slow decline. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. So I try to make sure like there like you can do like or uh, can you play? Can you play in the lower range? I wasn't lower able to hear that. Sir? Sorry. Yeah. So like. Oh, so it's more like a. Uh... Yeah, because like vocalists do that a lot when they when they're ending their phrase, they'll drop that note a little bit. Right. Right. Or right. When they're, or when they're leaping from a note to another note, they'll scoop up to it. So I try to make sure that, that is, I'm, I'm a super stickler for um, almost exact replication in the beginning. So I, because I like that it is kind of an extended technique on the flute. Yeah. You're not using um, a G to an A, you're using more like a G half, sh- like half sharp to an A. Like. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. So it's more of like a chromatic thing in a way, but it's, yeah. it's more about how you phrase it, right? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, uh, somebody redeemed special dance. Are you ready? Uh-huh. We got to sure. do it again. We got to do it again. Here we yeah. go. <laughs> and there's no music either, so it makes it even more awkward. Oh, how awkward. lovely. Awkward. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, so I think it's about time to wrap up the show. I just want to thank you so much for being on here. Honestly, it was a pleasure great. talking to you. This was awesome. This was great. You're a very, very talented musician. Tell the people where they can find Likewise. you. You can find me on TikTok, Flute Dude Music. You can find me on YouTube, Flute Dude Music. For now, you can find me on Facebook. I'm not sure if I want to keep it, but Flute Dude Music. <laughs> <laughs> um, eventually, my site will be up at fl- flutedudemusic.com, but uh, we'll see how that works, I guess. <laughs> oh, okay, nice. And uh, when I post this video on YouTube, um, I'm going to have all your links down in the description box. I hope everybody out there enjoyed this. I will see you guys this next time. A lot of fun. I will have all of his. Yeah, of course. I will have all of his links down in the description box, as with mine. Dennis, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. You got it, Jason. Thanks. All right. Take care. Bye.